People say, wait a minute, how could the world flood? Could it rain enough to cover Mount Everest? I was in a debate one time and this skeptic stood up and he said, Hovind, do you realize when it rains, it releases heat into the atmosphere? I said, yes, sir, I taught physics. It's called the latent heat of condensation. What's your question? He said, well, if it rained enough to cover Mount Everest, the heat would cook the entire world. I said, you are exactly right. He said, but don't you think it rained enough to cover Mount Everest? I said, no, I've never said that. He said, well, do you think Mount Everest was covered? I said, well, I don't think Mount Everest was there. I don't think the mountains even formed till late in the flood. The Bible covers that in Psalm 104. We'll get into that later when we talk about the mountain ranges forming on this planet. But no, I don't think it rained enough to cover Mount Everest. I don't know any Christians that teach that. I think what happened was the whole world was covered with water, but the water didn't come from rain. Very little water for the flood came from rain. So they build up this straw man that if it rained enough to cover Mount Everest, it would cook the world, and that's correct, but it's an artificial argument. That's not where the water came from. There are several theories about what caused the flood in the days of Noah. I'm going to share with you my theory in a few minutes, the Hoven theory of what may have caused it. We call it that because I don't want anybody else to have to take the blame for it if it's wrong. I will take the blame if it's wrong. And this will not be super evangelistic. It's just a matter of getting you some scientific evidence to put things together in your mind and say, wow, maybe that's what happened and give you an answer to some of the skeptics and scoffers and atheists. But we need to understand a couple things. The original creation was very different. The Bible says there was not only the earth, but there was water in the crust of the earth, under the crust of the earth, actually. Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord's. He founded it upon the seas. That's an interesting verse. The earth was built on top of the water. Psalm 133, He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. What today is in the oceans on the surface used to be in the crust of the earth, stored up in big subterranean chambers. Psalm 136, He stretched out the earth above the waters. Better read that verse very carefully. That's given us a powerful clue of what the original creation was like. And then the fountains of the deep broke open. The water that used to be in the crust went shooting to the surface when the fountains of the deep broke open. The Bible says in Job 38, Who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, when it issued out of the womb? Boy, I tell you what, if you've never seen a baby born, when the water comes breaking out of the womb, it is an amazing process. One of my friends was in college. His wife was standing there cooking breakfast at the kitchen, uh, kitchen, in the kitchen, and her water broke, <laughs> just like she wet her pants all over the floor. Her husband came running in. What happened? What happened? He slipped and broke his arm, and she had to drive him to the hospital and get his arm set. <laughs> what a mess when babies are born. I delivered one of my kids at home, and <laughs> when the water issues out of the womb, it is a royal mess. And God, he's telling us here in the book of Job, God is talking here in chapter 38. Uh, when that water issued out of the earth, it just burst out of the earth. And break, it says, and goes on and says, And break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. I believe the earth broke up at the time of the flood, and we still have the scars all over the planet where this happened. They're called fault lines. I lived right by the San Andreas Fault. I've studied the Hayward Fault, the New Madrid Fault, the Golden Fault. None of them are my fault, but I've studied them, okay? There's no question the earth is busted up into plates, and there's no question these plates are moving. And when they move, it causes tsunamis and earthquakes and volcanoes. There's no question that stuff happens. The question is, when did this happen to the earth? I think it happened about 40, 400 years ago at the very beginning of the flood. And evolutionists will say, so, well, don't you see that's proof of Pangaea? These continents fit together. Can't you see how South America and Africa seem to be a fit? Well, yeah, now hold on a minute. How many have ever heard of Pangaea? They teach this in the textbooks like some kind of fact, you know, all the continents used to fit together. I say, guys, now wait a minute. There's a couple things you ought to consider about this Pangaea theory before you get too excited. First of all, they'll say South America and Africa seem to fit. Yeah, my house and the neighbor's house would fit too if you slid them together. What does that prove? Nothing. <laughs> It doesn't prove the street oozed up in between them and the houses slid apart, okay? It's a pure coincidence. The shape of these continents is an absolute pure coincidence based upon the water level. The evidence they use for continental drift is interesting. They'll say the shapes of the continent seem to fit. Similar fossils are found in opposite sides of the ocean. Well, that may be true. But it's also true those same fossils are found literally all over the world. Those fossils found all over the world is just as much evidence of a flood. I mean, a worldwide flood, how far could the dead animals float around? Uh, quite a ways, right? And then they'll say there are magnetic reversals in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. 
Well, now hold on a minute. They don't tell you they shrank Africa nearly 35 or 40 percent to make them fit, do they? They don't tell you that Mexico and Central America are gone. Hey, Senor, que pasa? Donde esta Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala? They don't tell you that Europe and South America were rotated counterclockwise and Africa was rotated clockwise to make them fit. And they also don't tell you what I think ought to be obvious to a kindergartner. Did you know if you took the water out of the oceans, you would notice there is dirt underneath. I mean, the oceans actually have a bottom to them. How many knew that already, okay? I mean, they, they do have a bottom, okay? So people say, do you think the earth was ever, the continents were ever connected? I say, well, duh, they're still connected right now. What do you mean, were they connected? Hello, they're still connected. <laughs> They've always been connected. The earth has a crust. Out of the low places are full of water, I understand, okay? But 